All right, should we get started? Or might as well. Great. Well, hello everyone, welcome. Um, you might know me, my name is Laurel Ann Riley. Um, I'm super excited to be with here, here with you this evening. Just a second, I'm gonna highlight myself here so you can see me. There we go. Um, as I was saying, I'm super excited to be here with you this evening and hearing from Shelly Rugg. Um, Shelly, it's been great working with you and hearing about your art. So um, I'm here on behalf of the Dance Palace and the Art Committee, and we'll be monitoring the chat, which you can find at the bottom of the screen. Um, and tonight, you'll also be able to ask Shelly questions at any point, either through the chat, or you can also open your mic tonight. Um, so yeah, you can raise your hand, or you can just open your mic and say, hey, I have a question. Um, and then at the end, we will have a little question and answer session. Uh, I think that's it. With that, I will turn it over to our curator, Elizabeth Fenwick. There you go. There you go. Hi there. Um, well, welcome to Shelly's show and this new platform of virtual showing. Um, Shelly, uh, I've known Shelly now for a number of years and we've had the opportunity to work together at Gallery Route One. Um, but first time I fell in love with what Shelly was doing was with her 10 by 10 performance pieces that she set up at Gallery Route One. Because Shelly is more than just you're gonna see a lot of, of different ways that Shelley is involved in, in being an artist. She was born to a couple of bohemian artist types. And her dad was an actor, a playwright and director who taught in the theater department of California State University of Long Beach. Her mom was involved in drama, acting in local theater and her mom inspired her pursuit of dancing, singing, visual arts. You'll see that uh, Shelley has taking her art to being an activist, an artist, a leader. Um, uncles, grandmothers also provided much of the um, inspiration for her artwork. She's incredibly creative. She seems to be easy to move between worlds of visual and performing arts. She, um, she has uh, been in parades, singing in a band. She coordinated community fe festivals and events down in Long Beach where she lived before she came up here. And uh, one, of her, one of my favorite of her activist pieces is with eight foot long knitting needles, which she took in a gallery route one in one of our events, did this beautiful moving uh, piece about plastic and the, the environment. And it, was, it stuck in my mind and made the front page of the Point Race light, as a matter of fact. Um, she graduated from Cal State University Long Beach's Fine Arts Department. And she holds an MFA and a BFA in drawing and painting. Um, she also explored performance art with Rachel Rosenthal. She's participated and organized a number of art exhibits and has received many grants down in Los Angeles from the Department of Cultural Affairs. She received a fellowship of her performance work for the Long Beach Art Council. And as a founding member of the Long Beach based artist group Flood, she helped to produce Long Beach's annual sound walk events for 10 years. She also used to front her own band, Shake in the Chantuzies, while in Long Beach, and is also a photographer. She left her position as artistic director of Hope University in Anaheim in order to pursue her creative potential in Northern California. Currently, she's gallery coordinator for Gallery Route One and is in the process of moving to Lagunitas. Um, there, there are so many ways that I've watched Shelley in our community. Um, and one of the ways that I love watching Shelley was you and how you used to bring your dad on stage at all the 10 by 10s. And you got to see a chance of your family and your, your inspiration, the way, it, way it's just seems to be so spontaneous for you. Um, I love looking at your portraits and a lot of what we're seeing today, I believe is uh, work that's evolved around trees and that's they're 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 just gorgeous um you um at the end there'll be time for everybody to ask questions for, of Shelley and she um well you're gonna see a good show there's puppets there's everything I think it's a total surprise all righty so Shelley I'd like to introduce you to Shelley Rogg everybody Thank you, Elizabeth. That was wonderful. And um, I do want to invite everyone to um, 
feel free to chime in with questions at any time. Uh, let's keep this very, very casual and loose and open. Um, so I thought I'd start out by sharing some of the work I've done in the past, just a little taste. So uh, Laurel Ann, if you want to go ahead and share the screen and we'll take a peek. All right, this, this, uh, this is a piece that I, I did for an event in downtown Long Beach's East Village Arts District. They had an event where they wanted sculptures that would move to coincide with the um, Grand Prix event that happened every year. And I originally envisioned this as a, a moving man that I would roll down the sidewalk and his arms and legs would move. But since I'm into faces and heads, I started with the head and lo and behold, the head became humongous. Um, not an experienced sculptor apparently. Uh, so I went with the, the hugeness of the head and got rid of the body and just decided this is going to be a puppet theater. So, um, the stage of the puppet, the main stage of the puppet theater is the mouth, the open mouth. And then there are holes in the nose and holes in the ears where the puppets can also emerge and come out. And all these places were lit with flashlights um, for evening performance. Um, go ahead to the next slide. And this is just to share, this is work in progress. Those are my kids inside the head, <laughs> just to help get a sense of scale. All right, we'll go ahead and go forward. So my big head rolling puppet theater um, got noticed by the Arts Council in Long Beach and they uh, hired me to represent the arts in every parade in Long Beach for two years. And this was the Gay Pride Parade and um, we took the big head and, and put a shirt on him and added hands and he's being pulled by a little car. We put a little wind up device on top of the car. So uh, anyone who's been in a parade knows that every so often the parade stops and you have to wait and then you go again. And so we came up with this idea that every time we had to stop that the big head could move its hands and, and wind the little car back up and then we would go again. Um, so that's, that's the story of the big head so far. Uh, I guess we'll go to the next slide. Um, oh, this was- Sorry to interrupt, Shelly. <laughs> so just, um, if anyone has any comments at any point, you can write them in the chat. I wanted to share a comment in the chat from Claire saying, loving everything about this, even as I must multitask, arg. Thank you, brilliant <laughs> friends. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Claire. All right, and this, this was another parade. This was a Christmas parade where I created myself into a, a giant um, angel puppet. And um, so the, the arms in the front are false arms and my real arms are, are um, flapping the angel's wings. For two miles, I did this. My arms <laughs> really were heavy afterward, I must say. <laughs> um, next slide. This is a close up of the angel head. And um, I guess go ahead to the next slide. Uh, this is a shot of me with Huel Hauser. Huel Hauser uh, had a series of shows he did for public television, um, California's Gold or Huel Hauser Visiting. Um, and he came out and did a show about our Soundwalk event one year. So you can look it up, Soundwalk, Huel Hauser, and um, see a video all about it. And I um, got to walk around with Huel that day and, and show him all of the different um, sound art exhibits throughout the East Village. All right, next slide. Um, this is a, uh, an installation at the Torrance Art Museum that I was involved with the same group of artists who did flood. We also did other um, art activities together. Um, and so that's me in the back knitting with my eight foot long knitting needles. And in this case, I'm knitting um, paper towel. And so the woman holding the photograph there in the middle, she's actually assisting me by um, 
taking that paper towel off the roll and, and squeezing it into a strand. Um, anyway, go ahead, next slide. <laughs> So this is a, another view of the same installation. Uh, another artist um, made a piece showing the, the oil actually pouring out onto the floor. And, um, and of course, I, I didn't mention my friend Marco in the background, amazing performance artist. And he had himself up on this platform against the wall the entire time. And all the marks that you might be able to see on the wall were caused by him swinging his leg up uh, up onto the wall. <laughs> anyway, um, next slide, please. And uh, this this is sort of a, a, merge, a merging of fiber art and sound art. Um, just before I moved away from Long Beach, I was invited to create an installation uh, that, that combines sound art and fiber art. And um, I, I knew a lot of sound artists through my work with flood and um, and there's my my partner Jose and his son assisting me and so I was actually walking around the room in a in a large circle circling the room and knitting at the same time and so they held up the back end of my knitting needles and um, the blue shape you can see in the upper right, that's someone standing up on a ladder who is blindfolded and dropping knitting needles onto a metal plate that was wired for sound and, and would be manipulated. The sound was manipulated through a computer. Um, on the left is um, some people in a giant knitted tube undulating on a sound, um, platform so every time they move it sends signals to the computer and that is also turning the sound my part of the the sound in this event were my knitting needles themselves um, they actually make sound when they get tipped so enough about that let's go to the next slide thanks oh and there i am um knitting uh, outside of gallery row one and this was knitting for climate change. And in this case, um, I am knitting plastic scraps like plastic bags and tortilla bags and bread bags and all, all kinds of plastic and um, getting people to help me. So that's, that's how I did that performance. All right, next um, slide. I've, I've got actually got a question here. I'm just okay. wondering, like, what is what is it like to hold these knitting needle, needles? Like, how much strength does it require to, you know, like, make each movement with those? <laughs> well, that's a great question, actually. Um, when I I'll start with back at the Torrance Art Museum. That was a long term um, moment where I think I was knitting. It was either four or five hours. It was a, a extended period of time, and I I learned the hard way that this was really bad for my hands, <laughs> and my 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 hands became sort of stuck in this position for a while. I was not not real happy about that. <laughs> so they're they're fairly big around, and um, but they sit on the ground, so it doesn't you don't have to like lift them. It. But it is tricky to manipulate such large <laughs> objects. Um, so now I, I make sure I don't do it longer than probably an hour or so. Yeah. Got it. Kind of get stuck that way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Sure. I'll What's next? Oh, yes. Well, when we were preparing for tonight's event, um, I got into a discussion about how I got how I started painting uh, um, tree branches and birds and things like that. And um, it, it, it really started with um, a piece I was doing for the box show. I when I the first box show that I participated in, um, I was kind of disappointed because my piece didn't garner much um, validation in the form of bids. And, um, and so I, I thought, hmm, 
So the next year I, I put a face on a box and um, some, I had a hummingbird and a beetle and um, what else? Oh, oh, and dragonfly on the sides of the box. And I personally really loved it. And so I actually bought my own box back from the box show that year. Um, and then I just started thinking about where I am and what I'm noticing here where I live now in Northern California. And um, I realized I was noticing the branches of trees. And, um, and so I began I uh, did a couple little studies of birds and branches from photographs I had taken. And, um, and then I made this piece for the box show and it was um, very well validated <laughs> that year. All right, we'll go to the next one. Um, and so I, I, I was encouraged and inspired to continue this um, path, this series. And, um, and so this is my, um, piece for the box show that followed that one. And then um, I guess we'll go to the next one. And this is the most recent box show piece that I did. And um, I think that might be the end of the, the past work slides. All is right. that right? I think there's one more. Should we see? Okay. Aha. Oh, yeah. Well, this, um, so this piece uh, I made shortly after the pandemic hit. Uh, well, I made it in April of 2020 and I titled it I Antidote for Isolation. And um, the bird at the top has each of the birds, the three birds have writing on them. The one at the top says, care for yourself. Then it says, care for others. And then it says, care for the earth. Um, and I just wanted it to be a reminder to people that it's good to care. <laughs> I, I think I was hearing a lot of um, complaining about wearing masks and um, having to stay home and, and whatnot. And um, so, yeah, I just wanted to remind people that doing those things is, is a sign that you care. All right, I think, I guess that's it um, for that part. All right, as we're moving into the collection itself, I don't know if there's anyone who has questions. I'm actually not able to see people from the way I'm looking. So if you're holding your hand up, I'm not able to see you. So just open your mic and go for it. If you do have questions, just a reminder. Um, and I also am checking out the chat. So with that, All right. let's keep going. Okay, sounds good. All right. So this is the beginning of the exhibition for the Dance Palace. And um, this piece, um, I was leaving, leaving home up on Sunnyside and um, happened to see this bird sitting uh, in the tree uh, as the sun was going down. And so I took a quick photo of it and um, later made a painting. And I called this evening repose because I thought I felt like the bird was just taking a rest for the evening and uh, relaxing before calling it a day. Um, and so this piece is one of the first um, larger paintings I made in this exploration. And um, it may be hard to tell the, um, the images is, is slightly fuzzy, but the way I painted this one is a little looser than um, some of the work that follows it. Um, and I, I also had this idea that I wanted to stay somewhat true to the image, um, which had a very pale sky. Um, and after I did that um, in subsequent paintings, I, um, I stray from that um, adherence to the actual colors in the sky. So I guess we'll go to the next one. Um, this is one of my small studies. This piece is about four inches by 12 inches. And um, really um, a couple things looking at 
one different types of tree branch arrangements, um, seeing which which ones I like best, and and then playing with the the background color, and um, exploring different kinds of gradations and um, and whatnot. And what I also didn't tell you is um, so talking about process. Um, all of these paintings start out with a very random um, rough application of very intense color that um, might be kind of the opposite kind of colors to what I imagine I'm gonna end up with. So like for this piece, I was thinking I was gonna go from yellow into sort of greens into blue. So I, I put down um, magentas and orange and red um, in the background. So you can kind of see that glow on the edges of the branches. So I saw a question pop up in the chat. What are the dimensions? Okay, um, well, the, the first piece, let me see, I'll have to get out of. Uh... No, don't do it. First piece I showed you guys, that one's 30 inches square. And this one that you're looking at right now is four inches by 12 inches. And then we can go ahead and maybe take a look at the next one. This is another study. Um, another thing I like to do is, you know, even though these branches look almost black um, in some places, they you can see the red color behind um, and that's the same color actually being used the entire time, but in some places the, the colors built up more heavily. So it, it appears black. Um, and then this is just a, a blue gradation. All right, we can go to the next one. This is one of my favorites. This one is also a small piece, four inches by 12 inches. And if you look really carefully, you might see a couple bird shapes in there. Um, this one reminds me a lot of that first tree piece that I did for the box show. Um, and um, I just, so yeah, I guess I should talk a little bit about um, a, another layer of the process. So I told you I lay down um, some very bright color um, underneath and it's very random. I'm not really thinking about what's going to happen or how that color specifically will influence what goes on top. And then I very painstakingly try to recreate what I see uh, in my photograph, where all the little branches are and where they're headed and where they're turning and where they're straight and where they're curved and where they're smooth and where they're bumpy. Um, and at some point I I find myself getting confused <laughs> and lost in the tangle of branches and um, and I allow that to be okay. And then once I've got all those branches laid out, then I go into um, just playing with color and seeing how I want it to move across the surface. All right, we'll go to the next one. This is also a four by 12 inch study. And um, you can see exploring a real different palette here. Um, one of my one of the favorite things for me about these paintings are these little little moments that occur within the whole, um, looking at little little sections that um, have some really fun little shapes happening in them. Um, thank you, Barbara. And then I guess we'll go to the next. Okay. This uh, is a, a tiny little painting and it, it kind of came out of um, that one box show piece that had a similar color palette and I, I liked it and I wanted to sort of try again. Um, this piece is just, uh, I think it's four inches square. Let me, let me check here. Yeah, it's four inches square and um, 
this is a a black bird that was in a tree in a shopping mall in Petaluma. <laughs> All right, and the you can see the the way the color is being applied. You can really see the the color underneath. And um, here I'm I'm kind of getting into a more sort of stained glass effect with the color. All right, let's see what's next. All right, this one um, I called Fiery Sunrise. And this piece is 18 by 24. And um, just a very thick layer of branches here and a lot of movement and, and, um, and the, the color exploration here being pretty much just orange all the way, um, but a very pale application of orange at the bottom and then a very um, rich um, glowing orange at the top. Thank you, Barbara. All right, we'll go to the next one. Awesome, and I, I have a comment here from uh, Mike O'Shea also um, that says the colors evoke a stained glass window. Very nice. Oh, thank mm -hmm. you. <laughs> all right, all right. This one, um, this was a, a photo. I shot a photo while I was staying at the Russian River um, a couple of years ago and was so tickled to see this hummingbird land on this little really kind of tall grasses next to the river and um so here the 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 color that i put down initially was pretty much green and um knowing that i was going towards purple in the end um and yeah, I think I might have, I started with a very, very pale green and white and then just slowly moved into the purple. And you can see a little bit of the, the river going by at the top. All right, we'll look at the next one. All right, this is Magnolia. Um, my next door neighbor on Sunnyside has a gorgeous um, magnolia tree, um, not the classic magnolia, but the more open and airy um, type of magnolias. Often you'll see, see them in pink. Uh, this particular tree was in white. And um, I just really loved the lines of um, the magnolia branch. You know, so I, I kept this one really simple just to be able to see that shape. All right, thank you. Thank you, Carlos. Okay, this one is, I titled Twilight. Um, really different kind of um, branches here you see the very heavy, dense branches and then all the fine, um, fine branches that come off of there with some random kind of fluffy stuff. <laughs> and one thing I found is that as much as I love looking at trees with leaves on them, I don't break out my camera to take their picture. I like to take pictures of um, branches and especially, um, when I can really see the branches silhouetted against the sky so that they're, they hold their own. Um, so here, just, um, you know, the photograph, the, the sky behind these branches was probably a very light gray, um, but I decided to explore this sort of purple to, to blue um, gradation. And, uh, and it reminded me of the, the colors of twilight. This piece is uh, small as well. It's um, six inches wide by 12 inches long. It's a sweet little piece. All right, next one. 
Okay, this one I called autumn morning. Um, it does sort of feel like uh, those leaves are about to fall. And um, I had done a smaller version of the same um, tree. Let me see here. I'm trying to see what size. Um, this one is 12 inches wide by 24 inches. And um, yeah, really, really different use of color in this one. I, I'm, I'm personally not, not sure how I feel about it, but I really do love the, the shapes of the, um, the plants in this piece. All right, we'll go to the next one. All right, this one, um, this is, let's see, this is Point Reyes Blackbirds. And this is 15 inches by 30 inches. Um, thanks for the question, Barbara. These, these paintings are all done on wood. So it's a very hard surface and it's a, a cradled wood panel. So this piece, um, it has birds in it and they're very tiny. Um, if you can find them, they're, they're up towards the top of the painting. And, um, and it gives you a sense of the scale of the tree. Um, and I just loved all the sort of tangled confusion towards the bottom. And then it, it, it just continues. There's certain times when there are shapes that echo and repeat and other times where they're just completely surprising. Um, and I was pointing out to um, Elizabeth the other day that there's sort of this heart shape in the upper left-hand corner. So if you see that, if you can find it, um, I don't know, you, are you gonna win a prize or something? I'm not sure. <laughs> if you find the heart, then you'll know that you must donate to the dance palace. That's what it means. <laughs> and, um, and this one also uh, starts to have a real stained glass quality to it because I, I wasn't um, adhering to a strict sort of gray, smooth gradation as I went through. Um, I allowed a certain amount of chance to enter into the process. And um, yeah, it's very magical. All right, we got a few more. Let's go to the next one. All right, this is called Petaluma Crows. This is uh, 24 by 36. And there are two crows up in the branches up there. And this, um, this photo I shot uh, when I was in Petaluma one day and it was a little drizzly out and really gray sky, but very pale gray. And uh, I was watching the crows move about and this tree is just, I don't know what you guys think, but I think it's pretty amazing. And it's, yeah. there's a little bit of a almost um, scary quality. Oh, Claire says like walking through a dream. Um, and there's, um, Yeah, the crows are just hanging out, but um, this one just has the most rich, creamy application of this sort of purpley blues um, all the up and um, down. Yeah, spooky. It's kind of spooky. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Um, yeah, walking through a dream forest. Spooky dream forest. All right. Okay, let's see the next one. Okay, this one is called Lookout Crows because I felt like the crows were both, you know, keeping an eye out from their perch. This one is also 24 by 36. And um, this piece, um, they're, the heavier looking branches that you see at the top of the painting are actually in the foreground. They were quite, I was like standing under a tree looking through it 
to the tree in the distance where the crows were. And you can see the, the tree that the crows are on has this very fine little branches coming off of it. Um, so two different kinds of trees here. And then um, playing with this yellow to green to blue gradation again, um, I'm really happy with how this, this one came out. Um, it just has a real glow to it. And um, yeah, like it. All right, and then I guess we're to the last one. Uh, this piece is called What Have You Done? And it's, it's a little bit about um, climate change from the perspective of youth and, um, you know, a child looking us in the eye and saying, what have you done? Um, what have you done to add to the problem? Uh, have you done anything to help? <laughs> what have you done? So um, it was also for me an exploration of pairing what I had been exploring with um, the birds and branches with a portrait and just seeing how the two might um, interact with each other. Um, so I guess that that about covers the show. And if anyone has any questions or comments they'd like to make, we'll open the floor. Well, this is Elizabeth calling uh, or talking. How can people <laughs> how can people contact you for to find out about more about your work? And um, what's the best way for folks to do that? Well, I do have a website and it's shellyrug.com. So mm -hmm. uh, you can visit my website and see a lot of the works there and contact me through the website. That's a great way. Oh, and before we go, I, I do want you to see my, these are the, the puppets from the Big Head Rolling Puppet Theater. I made them a little car to go along with the Grand Prix. And then these are the little guys that came out of the, the puppets nose and ears and, and whatnot. And this is one of my puppet heads from one of the parades I did um, when I was, I was a grieving mother for the Veterans Day Parade. <laughs> Aw. Yeah, that was sad. That so, is sad. Beautiful, but sad, yeah. All right. I have a question about I noticed that you you also refer people to the Fine Art America website, and I was wondering how that works for you, and and it's kind of an interesting website. Yeah, thanks for asking. Um, well, it's right now I'm using it because it's an opportunity for me to um, print my art onto products. Is really what it what it is. Um, and so if I want to produce some cards or uh, pillows or tote bags, things like that, that's, that's what that's about. And yeah, so people can, can go there and um, get my art on a phone case, <laughs> things like that. <laughs> or shower. I liked your mask that you had for a while with your art on it. I thought that was super clever. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, you can get your own mask with Shelly art on it too. <laughs> yeah. It looks like we've got a question here in the chat from Claire. Um, if you didn't already answer this, how long does it take you to finish a painting? You're so prolific. Oh, well, thank you. Um, well, these days it takes me a long time to finish a painting because I find myself really distracted by my life and um and it's it's made things a struggle but um generally um i'll i'll work on these uh, i'll work on several at once and i'll i'll get some panels out and i'll splash some paint around on them really without thinking so it's sort of a great sort of zen process of not worrying and just putting some color down and just having fun smushing the paint and then, um, then I'll find an image that I really love and I wanna see how it looks as a painting. And so then I go about the task of 
painstakingly trying to follow all those little branches and everything and, and trying to paint them as, as a sort of calligraphically, you know, just directly as a, as a mark, not being fussy. If it doesn't go the right way, I, I let it be. Um, and, um, and once I've done that, that, that process uh, takes two to four days, depending on the complexity of the tree and the size of the, the painting. And then once that's done, then I, I get a little giddy about getting out all my color and playing with what am I gonna do with the color this time? Um, and just um, beginning that process. And so that's another um, two to four days, depending uh, again on, on the size. So. Do you think of yourself primarily, oh wait, as a painter? Oh, thanks for that question, Barbara. Um, I really have always been a drawer and a painter ever since I was little, um, but growing up with theater people, that, that's always been fun too. And, um, and I got to explore performance art in college and um, continued that exploration after college. And I'll say that um, they're so different for me. You know, I really, I really actually get quite lit up by doing performance work. I love um, performance that creates um, audience engagement. Um, one example of that uh, I will share with you is um, I, when I got a fellowship for my performance, I um, decided to create a giant cootie catcher. Um, do you all know what a cootie catcher is? <laughs> so a cootie catcher is this, you, it, you uh, fold paper, you start with a square and you fold it up and then you get this little thing that sits on your fingers and you go this way and that way and open and close it. And then somebody says a color and you spell the color Y, E, L, L, O, W. And then they say a number and you say one, two, three, four, five, six. And then they say another number and you open it up and you tell their fortune. Uh, you're gonna be married at the age of 50 and have 10 kids and live in a shack. No. Anyway. Um, so I made a giant cootie catcher. So imagine that this cootie catcher is so big that instead of the, the four fingers up inside of it, it's got four people up inside of it. And so the four people had to move together as a team to make this cootie catcher open and close. And, um, so I, I, I brought my cootie catcher down the street through, uh, it was the art walk event. And I, I had like a chair, like I was a lion tamer or something. And I, I guided the cootie cut catcher down the street. And then we found our spot where we had a light set up and, and, um, and then I just hawked people to come over and um, get their fortune from the cootie catcher. <laughs> so you can probably notice I'm getting excited just talking about it. Uh, I do really enjoy that kind of performance work. Um, I, I like um, sparking people's um, curiosity and imagination. Um, but when it comes to drawing and painting, it's, it's a different part of me that, that comes out and it's, it's a much more visual part. Um, I really um, am attracted to high contrast. I'm sure you've noticed in, in my work. Um, and I like color contrast. I am really um, aware of color and how the relationship of colors um, affect each other. Um, so that could be a color that's underneath another color. It could be a, what color is right next to another color that um, can really um, change the, the, the dynamic of the, the image. I, I support Claire's idea about the Western weekend and your cootie catcher. I love oh. that idea. Yes, yes. Well, I have to find some real able-bodied people to get in. All people. What's that? All people, right? All people. Well, yeah. they don't have to be 
they have to be at least five feet tall because <laughs> it's about like five feet same height right <laughs> they kind of need to be more think, yeah you want to you want to have the same height approximately <laughs> and um and you have to be able to work blind because once you're inside there you can't see anything you can look down at the ground but that's about it and um and so you know there's the movement of the cootie catcher and then once it's time for somebody to get their fortune told, then the cootie catcher has to go down on its knees. So the people in it have to drop to their knees <laughs> so that it can open up wide enough so that I can read the fortune. <laughs> Clever. Yes, it, it must live again, the cootie catcher. Oh, Petaluma Arts Center. Yeah, exciting. Yeah, we've also got a comment here from Tony. I kind of got lost in the chat, but she says, thank you so much for sharing your work. I love your commitment to the trees and their birds. <laughs> Thanks, Tony. <laughs> yeah. And Nancy's saying, beautiful work and how creative on the cutie catcher. I did it in grade school. It's a Yeah. <laughs> um, so it looks like we have time for one more question. If anyone has a burning question that they now is the moment <laughs> you if no one has a question I'm wondering if Elizabeth has a question um, well you covered a lot of the basis I was curious because I was wondering if you had sketching involved in creating your piece as opposed to the photographs um, but um, and then but your love of color I would um, I, um, I loved hearing, explaining that part of your work and your body of work. So, and it seems, do you see where it's going and moving from where you were to where it's coming next? Hmm, yeah, I, I'm actually in the middle of moving right now. Um, there's a lot of green out there, yeah. <laughs> I have to say. Um, but uh, I definitely am excited to get my studio set up and um, continue the series because I, I keep getting inspired. I see new trees that I wanna try painting and new, you know, I think the palette, the, the colors of the, the background were, were probably really influenced by where I had been living because I could see the sunrise every morning and mm. um, just the, the an incredible variety of um, color changes that I got to see um, while living there. So, mm. yeah, so I don't nice. know, it's, it's different here. More shade. <laughs> Great. Um, thank you so much, Shelley. This has been, um, I loved you sharing the work and the chance to um, actually explore more of your performance stuff, which is, your actions, um, that I find super exciting and I'd love to figure out a way we'd have more of that going on here in Point Reyes. Um, and I, um, I know that next month, uh, Mike O'Shea is the artist of the month and you'll be receiving an email sometime soon, everyone, to letting you know of when that virtual um, uh, opening happens. These are fun. I like the, I like the questions and um, and I think this is a great committee. If anybody's wondering what committee should I be on, the Dance Palace Lobby Art Committee is a great group of people and a wonderful way to be involved, supporting other artists for their first chance out, you know, to have their first show. I got to do that a couple of times and I, it's a wonderful experience. So try it out. <laughs> Thanks, Laurel Ann. Back to you. Can I just... Um... Before we go, I just want to thank everyone who showed up today. Um, really appreciate you being here. And um, I hope you enjoyed uh, the presentation. And maybe you'll have more questions when I see you in the future. <laughs> thank you so much, Shelly. That was a really nice presentation. Uh, thank you, Carlos. And uh, definitely want to remind everyone, I'm sure Laurel Ann will, but I'm going to say it too. Please remember that um, the Dance Palace needs your support. It's uh, really challenging to be a community center where nobody can come in. So, um, so please uh, let it flow for the Dance Palace. And let's hope that at some point we will be able to open and get back to using our gallery like we used to. 
Very good. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much, Shelly. I'm going to spotlight myself here um, just to close out. Thank you so much. It's so cool hearing about your process of painting, your process of theater and um, all sorts of arts. Like, I don't know. It's just cool to hear about it all and your story. Um, like Shelly was just saying, um, it's true. It's difficult to be a community center and not be able to let people in in the physical building. And like Carlos said, we're hoping to let people in um, as soon as it's safe. Um, and I also just wanted to say that the Dance Palace has been offering lots of free events so that people can come in and be together and um, see art, spend time together, even though it's through Zoom. And the way that that's possible is thanks to people's donations. So again, I would say if you can donate, that would be great. Thank you. Um, and this talk will be going up starting tomorrow. So if you wanna watch it again, if you wanna share with friends, it'll be on our YouTube channel. I did send the link in the chat. Um, and you can also see all of our past reception with, I think this is our sixth one. So yeah, um, <laughs> you've got six hours of art talks to watch if you ever want to. Um, <laughs> All of this information I'll be sending out in an email um, tomorrow. You'll be receiving it in your inboxes through email. Um, I think that's all I've got on um, things I want to cover, but thank you so much, Shelly. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you to the art committee. And thank you to everyone who came tonight. Um, we'll see you next month for Mike O'Shea's show. Take thank care. Thank you, Laurel Ann. <laughs> Bye.